there are various kinds of threats that undermine or challenge academic freedom. Most obvious are legislative and administrative restraints or intrusions, things like loyalty oaths. Happily, the United States Supreme Court finally did away with loyalty oaths. They also did away with or abolished intrusive inquiries launched by legislative committees like the McCarthy-era committees. But there are still major concerns, let's say, by conditions that are imposed by a government grant. Indeed, it was just a few months ago that the United States Supreme Court resoundingly struck down conditions on a government grant. It wasn't really in an academic institution, but it had clear uh, implications. So when government acts, there's always a risk that academic freedom will be threatened. But it's not only when government intervenes. It can come from the private sector, for example. Some corporations that support research impose conditions on the degree to which and the time at which the results of that research may be published. Well, that's uh, clearly a private sector restraint that can be just as troubling as what government does. Then, finally, there are internal pressures. A, uh, an academic department, for example, can sometimes be the worst threat to academic freedom if it gangs up on an unpopular colleague, and that happens. That's not governmental, it's not corporate, but it can be highly intrusive and quite subversive of academic freedom in the broadest sense. It's not easy to get at a situation of that kind, ganging up on an unpopular colleague, for example but it creates a threat to academic freedom just as clearly. Now, can governing boards intervene? Occasionally, uh, not easily, it's a real challenge. But the governing board that watches out for the victim of persecution or harassment uh, or just severe unpopularity, any time a governing board or a senior administrator can find a way of stepping up to rescue the victim of such pressures. That's a happy day for the institution and, of course, for the board and the administration and, most of all, the faculty. In one sense, because I have taught the subject of religion or church and state for many years, almost every time I walk into the classroom, there is a potential risk that somebody, either one of my students or somebody else in the community, might be offended by something that I've innocently said or an illustration that I've used. So I try to be, I try to engage in what I would call as self-censorship in order to avoid that risk. But happily, I know that when I walk into that classroom, I am protected by academic freedom in case I failed to live up to the standards that uh, I imposed for myself.